it's Monte Carlo and welcome to Food School. Today we are going to learn how to make a pan sauce with a fabulous technique called deglazing. Now I know you've seen it at the end of a recipe. It says deglaze the pan. You're like, what does that mean? Here's exactly what it means. When you're cooking your protein, you get those brown bits at the bottom of the pan and you're stressed. You're like, oh my God, I'm burning it. But really it's liquid gold. Okay, that's called fond and you want it. Now I am using chicken today, but any protein that hits that pan is gonna help you develop that fond. And listen, vegetarians, you can get fond too, all right? It's all about having a fat in there, a high heat, but the most important part is not to waste it. So we're gonna start this pan, it's nice and hot, okay? You wanna be able to hold your hand above the pan for just a few seconds before you're like, okay, I'm, I'm not feeling right. I'm gonna add some high smoke point oil. In other words, don't use your extra virgin olive oil because it's gonna become bitter at this high heat. Once you see the smoke start, oh yeah, I love the smoke. We're going to add our chicken breast, which we rubbed down with adobo spice in an earlier episode of Food School. And we're gonna put it down in the pan away from you. Otherwise, you're gonna have a great story about how you got that scar. We're doing it skin side down. Now, the hardest part about searing is not being a pot stirrer, okay? Don't be a pot stirrer in the kitchen or in life. Look, as I grab the spoon, <laughs> it's natural. But when you're searing, you don't wanna move that protein, okay? You wanna let it go until the protein itself actually releases itself from the pan. And that's when you know it's ready to go in the oven. Now, while that's searing off, this is some fabulous time and I, I don't want to see, don't do this, okay? Don't do this like little, like every, that's really, don't do that, okay? Do this. Just push your fingers down against the grain and that way you're not wasting a ton of time. And now we are gonna get some parsley. I love this trick with the parsley. You grab a fork and you just run it through the parsley and that way you're not wasting a ton of time with that either. And finally, our chives. Ooh, so pretty. We are going to slice. Listen, okay, do you see how my knuckles are against the knife? Don't do this, okay? That's just gonna give everyone a heart attack, all right? You, you gotta put your knuckles back and let your knuckles guide the knife, okay? And you know when you see chefs go, that's wrong, all right? You're just, you're just messing up your knife and you, you come off like Dexter. All right, now we're gonna chop our herbs, gather them, and again, rocking motion. Never like this, always like this. Oh yeah, that's a sear. Now someone in your family is gonna be like, it's burnt! It isn't burnt. That's flavor. You want that char. We're gonna finish this off in our oven at 450 degrees. It's just gonna be there for about six, seven minutes until it reaches 150, 155 degrees inside the chicken breast. You don't wanna leave it there until it's 165, which is the proper temperature because there's this thing called carryover cooking, which means it's gonna keep cooking. We are going to chop a shallot. There's always something to do, okay? That's why this recipe is a quick one. You gotta stay busy. So while that chicken is coming up to temperature in our oven, we are gonna continue mincing our shallot and our garlic. Now I know it's a lot easier to go and grab your garlic out of a jar. Don't do it because garlic loses its potency after just a few hours and the stuff in that jar has been there for a really long time. You're losing all the nutrients. And PS, they have these chemicals in there. I'm not even gonna tell you, it's gonna scare you. And then we're gonna do what I like to call the rock and chop. You're gonna take the tip of your knife and you're gonna rock your knife over the garlic. And that's gonna help you mince it. Now, if you're impatient, you can always take a little bit of salt and press your knife with the blade away from him, okay? onto the garlic, and that's gonna help release the oils and help you mince it even more. I love using my five senses when I'm in the kitchen. You can always tell when something is done because it releases a beautiful bouquet. That chicken is ready. Oh, get it. 
<gasps> yes. What we're gonna do is we're gonna let our chicken rest. If you cut into it right now, it's gonna release all of its juices. So you gotta let it cool down, let it coagulate some, okay? I wanna point out this fabulous bond in the pan, okay? Do you see that? You want all of that goodness. What you don't want is a ton of fat. So we're gonna go ahead and drain this out and just leave about a tablespoon of fat in the pan. Now we are ready to begin our pan sauce and it's all about elbow grease. First step is to take our shallots and our garlic. That sizzle means it is ready freddy. We're gonna stir that up and start getting all of that beautiful fond, all of that treasure off the bottom of this pan. Listen, you don't have to deglaze, okay? You don't have to. It's just like you don't have to watch the last episode of your favorite show. I mean, you'll live, but you're not gonna feel fulfilled. Once you smell that garlic, you wanna put wine, chicken stock, and keep using that elbow grease. These liquids are gonna help us get all of that fond off the bottom of the pan. And you know what's great? You don't have to really work hard when it's time to clean the pan. So you always wanna deglaze. And you don't necessarily have to use wine or chicken stock. You can use any liquid, really. You can even mix things up. You can do water and orange juice and wine. You know, experiment. That's what the kitchen is all about. Oh my gosh, it's like perfectly clean. That's how you know. Now we're gonna let that reduce by half. It's gonna thicken up a little bit. What does reduce mean, you ask? I'll tell you. You're letting all of that liquid evaporate, which concentrates the flavors. Have you ever had watered down Kool-Aid? It's not fun, right? And you're like, why? Why didn't you add more Kool-Aid? It's exactly it. You gotta let it reduce so you get that punchy flavor. So when you read reduce by half in your recipe, it literally means let that liquid boil until half of the amount that was originally there is gone. It has evaporated, leaving a bunch of concentrated flavor. It's gonna have to go a little bit more. Feel free to do this at a high heat. <laughs> All right, this liquid has almost reduced by half and you're gonna waft all of that steam into your face and you're gonna smell that that wine has pretty much cooked out. You're not gonna smell alcohol, okay? You don't want a bunch of raw wine in your sauce. Oh, yes! This is our friend, Butter. We love her. And this is our friend, Cornstarch. We love them together because they thicken our pan sauce. You're just gonna dredge your butter in your cornstarch, put it in the pan. And what that does is it helps us thicken our sauce, but more importantly, it gives it that beautiful gloss. So this one is doing really well. Do you see how like when I scrape the spoon, it stays separated? That means it's perfect. But if you over reduce your sauce, Listen, just add a little water. Now we're gonna finish with our fabulous fresh herbs and a little lemon zest. And for umami, just a drop of fish sauce. Fish oil was what my mom used to give me when I wasn't good. So we're gonna take our chicken breasts and you can see all of the liquid that they released. If we had cut into them and it would have been even worse. All right. Look at that beautiful glossy sauce. Okay, <laughs> I've done myself. You can taste that wine. You can taste those fresh herbs, bringing it and uplifting it. And then you can just put the sauce all over your chicken and enjoy. So what started out as a very humble chicken breast is now a fabulous roasted chicken breast seared to perfection and drizzled with an incredible white wine butter pan sauce. Mm.